Welcome to the video tutorial for 7.3.2, Structure of Matter, Part 2. Today's learning objectives is to know that all the fundamental particles can be characterized by charge, baryon number, lepton number, and strangeness. And what this really means is to be able to look up and find this information in a table of properties, like the one found below. And the second uh, thing we're going to be looking at today is to apply the conservation laws for all of the above quantities. So the quantities specifically refer to um, the quantities here, referring to charge, baryon number, lepton number, and strangeness. Okay, so uh, let's get right into it. Here we have the table, uh, just really a lookup table with a lot of information on it and uh, eventually you might be able to memorize a lot of this information yourself uh, after you've worked enough with some of these questions. Um, some of this information is also duplicated here as well. And uh, I'm gonna probably go through a little bit quicker. Um, and uh, I would encourage you to go back and check out the tables yourself and to complete your information. So first up, um, this is sort of in our first learning objective is just getting familiar with looking up all the information from the table that you've got. So um, I really recommend that you guys to uh, copy this table in your own notebook so that you can then look at this table up above, okay? Or of course, uh, because this is actually in your data booklet, have your data booklet beside you when you're doing this and it'll make your life a lot easier. So. I'll be scrolling up and down. Okay, uh, so in terms of charge, that's Q. Q is charge. So we kind of fast forwarded the unit for this, which was chapter five, but you'll soon get more and more familiar with uh, charge being the letter Q. B is the baryon number and S is strangeness. Okay, so uh, baryon number, I'll just make a quick note, baryon and strange. Okay, so pretty straightforward in terms of the names and the letters, except for charge being Q. Okay, um, up, up, up. So an up quark, uh, and you should have memorized this from your proton, your neutron. Your proton is made up of two up quarks and one down quark. And the up quark is worth two thirds positive. Okay, and you have two of them. So, um, and then the down quark is worth one third negative. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm trying to write one-third negative. That's a down quark, and this is, sorry, not up. That's down, this is up, okay? So uh, up, up, up is two-thirds positive E, and there's three of them, so I'm gonna write multiplied by three, which gives us a grand total of plus two positive charge. Plus two, sorry, that doesn't look very nice. Plus two. Oop, looks like uh, I've got a little bit of lag going on. Plus, plus two. Okay, uh, baryon number. Now, each quark, so not an anti-quark, but all of these are quarks. Each quark is worth one-third positive, and an anti-quark, so an anti-up quark is negative one-third. Okay, so that's pretty easy to remember. We have three up quarks, so that's positive one third, again, times three, giving us plus one for our baryon value. Now, there's no strange quarks, and you might notice that the only quark with a strange value is the strange quark. So pretty easy to remember. If you don't see a strange quark, that is pretty much a given. It's going to be zero. Um, so uh, next up, we have the up quark and two strange quarks. So an up quark is plus two thirds. A strange quark is minus one third, okay? So plus two thirds, minus one third, minus another third, which gives us a grand total of zero. In terms of baryon numbers, these are all quarks. So again, it's another plus one third, and there's three of them, so that is a plus one. So I'm just gonna circle the, uh, the total values. We have two strange quarks. Now, every strange quark is worth a negative one, and anti-strange is worth plus one, okay? So negative one, there's two of them, that gives us a strange value of negative two. 
Okay, uh, lastly, let's get to the last little one here. Up fork is two thirds and an anti down. So a down is worth negative one third, an anti particle flips the charge. Anti down flips the charge. You can look this up. Um, so that gives us positive one third, right? Yep, positive one third. Okay, one thing to remember is that you you will not get a, a sum total when we're talking about um, hadron particles. Um, you won't see um, the, the whole particle, that is. You won't see a, a non-integer value, okay? So it's pretty much given that you're always going to get an integer value. Okay, so that's plus one. Bearing number, now we have a, a quark and an anti-quark. So a quark and an anti-quark, which gives us a grand total of zero. Uh, there's no strangeness in this one. Okay, lastly, we have an anti-K. Uh, so uh, I think it's a kion. Kion is anti-up and S. So an anti-kion is a regular up and an anti-S. Okay, so we just flip, flip the values, uh, flip the particles around. Uh, so an up is plus two thirds two-thirds, not one-third, and an anti-strange. So a strange, if we remember, was negative one-third. I'm looking back right here, right? We have a strange there. That's negative one-third. So an anti-strange is exactly opposite of that, is going to be positive one-third. Okay, and again, we usually get that whole integer value. Okay, so that is sort of like an extra little bit of verification. Um, again, we have a particle, which is one-third, and an anti-particle, negative one-third giving us zero, and we have one strange, so th the strange, sorry, uh, the strange gives us negative two, an anti-strange gives us a plus, okay? So each strange gives us plus one, which means we have plus one here, okay? So I uh, hope that was pretty straightforward. Uh, again, just check the table of data. Um, it is all there, okay? And then remembering the rules for the antiparticles. Okay, example number two. Um, I'm going to try to get through this again pretty quickly. We're looking at violation of uh, particle interactions. So this is going to go back to our laws. So uh, I'm going to map out all the values first, then we're going to look at the table uh, for violation of data. Sorry, the violation of, um, um, what is it? The conservation law, violation of conservation law, that's what I meant. Okay, um, so I'm going to label this one, two, and three just so it's easier to follow. Question number one, so we have a before and after. So when we see that arrow, just like chemistry, uh, sort of a before and after, the reactants and the products, okay? So we have a proton, a proton and an antiproton. This is before, okay? And then we have a pion and a neutral pion. So that's zero and that's a positive. This is afterwards. Okay, so proton, pretty straightforward in terms of charge. So I'm gonna just put a little title under here. We're gonna have charge Q, we're gonna have baryon number, we're gonna have strangeness, okay? And, um, all right, let's get right into it. So that's plus two thirds, two thirds, I keep writing one. An antiproton is exactly the opposite charge is minus two thirds, okay? So now we're talking about specific particles or quarks, okay? Uh, we're not talking about the hadrons anymore, so we are gonna end up with some fractional values. Um, the baryon number for a proton, uh, all particles are plus one third, and antiparticles are the opposite, minus one third. Strangeness, it's not strange, okay? So uh, it, pr it may, remains pretty balanced before, uh, it doesn't have to be, but it, it is balanced before, okay? Now, afterwards, we have our pion. And uh, I'm just going to scroll back up, because we have a pion right there. So pion is an up and an anti-down. So pion is an up and an anti-down. Now, a neutral pion, uh, you're going to have to check back up, uh, I think, in the previous section. There, There's a little lookup table for positive pion, negative pion, and then a neutral pion. A neutral pion is either an up and an anti-up, or it's a down and an anti-down, okay? So it's one of two possibilities, but the, the 
charge, bearing number, and strangest for both of these combinations are exactly the same. Okay, so um, sorry, I'm just going to move that over. Okay, so now let's look at the charge. So the charge for an up is plus two thirds. And anti down, so down is negative one, and anti down is positive. Sorry, and down is negative one third, and so an anti down is positive one third. Okay, so that gives us one. And up and anti up, so up is two thirds, anti up is minus two thirds. Okay, so that cancels out pretty much. Baryon number, we have a quark. Uh, which is plus one third and an anti quark minus one third, so that cancels out. Again, uh, the pi zero, we also have a particle, a quark, sorry, and an anti quark. Okay, so that cancels out. There's no strangeness. So now into the commentary. Pretty straightforward. Strangeness is all zero. That's canceling all out to zero. Okay, this also cancels out to zero as well. Um, this is canceling out to zero. This is giving us plus one. And so this, uh, the reaction before has a grand total of zero, zero, okay. And so we have uh, an extra plus one charge afterwards, which is like, oh, okay. So uh, when we look at this, if we look at our conservation law, the conservation law for charge should always be conserved. So um, whatever you had before, if you had no charge before, then you should have no charge after, but you have plus one. Okay, so uh, therefore the charge conservation of charge is violated. Is violated. Okay, so that's question number one. Okay, uh, question number two. So we have. Um, that is, uh, looks like a delta uh, symbol, so delta particle, down, down, down. Okay, so let's get into that. I'm just gonna use a black line to separate it all. Okay, uh, we have that, and that's down, down, down. And then it turns into pi zero and pi negative. So pi zero, pi negative, and uh, I'm gonna get a little bit lazy. I'm gonna, just kind of have both things side by side. So pi zero is up and anti up. A negative pi is going to be, I think that's going to be a down and an anti up. So it's exactly the opposite of the positive one. Um, okay, so down, down, down. So charge there, pretty straightforward. There's three negatives. Every one third is a negative. So overall, it is negative one. Uh, the baryon number and the strangeness, it's not strange at all, so we'll just fill all that in. Uh, three quarks, so plus three, sorry, plus one third, uh, times three, which is giving us a plus one for our baryon number. Let's just kind of separate that out. Um, pi zero, so I'm just going to use the one above there. Um, whoa, what happened? That's not a pi zero. Okay, pi zero should be up and anti up, or down and anti down. So, uh, using our values from before, uh, plus two thirds, uh, minus two thirds, that's going to give us zero. Uh, and then we have plus one third, minus one third. I'm just taking this information from top, that's going to give us zero. Okay, so lastly, this is our negative pion. So down is negative one third, and anti up is another negative two thirds. So that's giving us negative one. And this is our baryon. So baryon is, again, plus one third and minus one third. Okay. So um, this is our before situation. Sorry, why am I writing after? Okay. Before and after. Okay. So before uh, strangeness, it's all good. Right. Everything is zero. We had a plus one and we have all zeros here. Aha, so it looks like that law is gonna be violated. And let's check our charge. We have a minus one and we have a minus one, but that's a zero. So charge is okay, strangeness is okay. Baryon number is now violated. 
OK, uh, I'm running out of space here. This was question number two. So uh, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to clear all this up. Uh, I'm just going to wipe everything out. And we're going to do question three right away. So hopefully this is, uh, isn't too difficult. It's just looking at values, uh, checking before and after, and what matches. OK, looking things up in the table of data. Um, not that difficult. OK, question three. Here we go. OK, uh, this is, uh, I don't remember what symbol that is. Um, but it is an up, down, and a strange. This is before. And uh, we have afterwards, we have a proton and a negative pion. Okay, so up, down, and strange. Up is, okay, so let's get charge here. I always do charge first, followed by baryon, followed by strange. Uh, we have a strange. A strange is a negative one. So I can almost bet that because there's no strange here and we haven't had a conservation law of strange violated, that it's going to be in the strange. Um, in fact, I can I know that it's a strange. But we're going to see if it, uh, anything else also violates here. So uh, up, down, and strange, uh, plus 2 thirds, minus 1 third. And a strange, what is a strange with? I think it's a minus 1 third. Yep, yeah, minus 1 third, OK. So strange is a minus 1 third. So charge is going to be overall 0. So that completely cancels out to 0. And uh, baryon number, there's three quarks. So that's plus 1. Uh, we have a proton. And a proton, oh my god, I have to split up a proton. OK, a proton is two ups and a down. And a pi on, a pi negative specifically, pi negative. I think we just did a pi negative, didn't we? Down and anti up. Down and anti up. And we're just going to steal the information down here. Uh, down and anti up. Charge is minus one. And the bearing number is zero. Okay, so we just did that pi negative. Um, proton up, up, down. So charge is plus one. Right, of course, it's a proton. Uh, three particles, three uh, quarks, so that's plus one. So uh, let's look very quickly, comparing everything. Uh, Barry number, one on top, one on bottom, uh, zero on top, and that also creates zero, okay? So it's only the strange that's violated in question number three. Okay, lastly, we're going to look at a uh, third example here. This is looking at the final piece that uh, it's probably slipped your mind by now. Whoops. Okay. Um, the final piece is our lepton number. This one. Okay. So, so far we haven't talked about lepton numbers because we haven't talked about leptons. Uh, we've been talking about quarks. Uh, we've been talking about hadrons, which, which also contain quarks, but we have not talked about leptons. So, example number three is going to show you... Um, the conservation law for leptons. So uh, we have a, um, that is a muon, and we have an electron, and we have an anti neutrino, an anti electron neutrino. I think that's what I've had. It's going to be, that's an electron neutrino. So an anti electron neutrino, that's going to be fun. Okay, our muon. Okay, so charge and lepton number. Let's check that out here. Okay, so I'm just going to move this down a little bit further. Move that down. And so then we can have uh, charge, lepton number. Okay, and um, there's no baryon values. There's no, um, there's no strangeness, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, uh, yeah, it, it's not a, uh, okay, it's not a, it's not a hadron. Okay, so don't have to worry about baryon values. Okay, um, quartz. So uh, it's not quartz, charge. Look at the cute thing about quartz. Okay, uh, muon, we have negative E. So that's negative one, essentially. Negative E. Lepton number there, uh, muon is plus one. Plus one. So we're going to transfer that down. Uh, an electron has also, uh, well, all lepton numbers have plus one. 
So electron is plus one. An anti uh, particle is going to have the opposite. Okay, uh, it's actually stated here in this table. So lepton members, all leptons have plus one. Anti leptons have minus one. Ooh, okay. So anti leptons have minus one. So again, uh, we're seeing this right away. Uh, we'll, we can finish off the charge. Uh, electron is negative e. Electron neutrino, um, I think, is going to have a positive value, positive electron. OK, so antiparticles, I'm pretty sure that's what it says. Uh, all particles um, doesn't state what antiparticles have in terms of charge. OK, um, we'll clarify that. Uh, about what that is. Um, okay, but our lepton number is definitely violated here. And so that's zero, that's plus one, okay. So uh, lepton number, lepton conservation violation. Okay, um, I'm going to have to very quickly look up uh, what that is. And I'm going to do that right now using my computer so I can clarify this okay so um, we're looking at uh, anti uh, anti electron neutrino charge anti electron neutrino is anti particle thus has the opposite charge okay so it is a plus uh, so we actually also have a violation of charge here as well. Charge is violated, or the viol uh, violated, the charge law. Okay, so we have two violations here. Okay, guys, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that helps. This seems pretty straightforward. Uh, not going to assign anything today, but uh, check back next time for uh, more questions on this.